Well, thanks everyone for coming. Um, today is the deep dive. Uh, how many people here were yesterday on my intro talk? Okay, so half of the people more or less. So today we are going to talk specifically about one of the features we have shipped on the latest version of Falco, which is um, detecting random things happening at the Kubernetes level. So my apologies for the people that were here yesterday, but I'm going to do a very, very quick intro on Falco, and then we'll move into, into a real demo. So basically, Falco is a behavioral activity monitor tool, specifically built for containers. Basically, we'll be able to detect any suspicious activity defined by a set of rules, by a template. If those containers or those processes doesn't behave according to the template, we can uh, trigger different alerts or events and then do different things with them. Um, the reason why we are here is because recently uh, Falco uh, joined the CNCF Foundation and now we are hosted within the umbrella and they gave us the opportunity to talk with the community, with you people here today. Um, this used to work on the real presentation. It was an animated GIF, but the internet connectivity issues, I'm running on PDF. But this was, was a very simple demo of how Falk works, but no worries, we'll try to do it live. Um, this works. Okay, so um, a little bit about Falco internal architecture. Basically, uh, Falco leverages the SysDig engine to do system called uh, kernel instrumentation. Basically, we will capture all the system calls from the kernel and we'll move them into user space to do some kind of analysis. Um, so if we uh, look at the Falco internal architecture from a high level point of view, uh, we can see how there is like uh, a set of like kernel and libraries that collect all these events and they are sent to the rule engine, which is the part that matches against those rules or templates. And if they match, um, we, we create an output. So if you remember from yesterday, uh, the way that Falco rules work, it's um, similar to this. So we create a rule, we give it a name, then there is like a description, and the magic happens here in the condition. This is the filtering, okay? Um, so basically here we are looking, we want to see, uh, or the purpose of this rule is to detect if any processes is writing in a binary path. So basically the way we uh, get that information from system calls is we look at system calls that they are unopen and the directory is in slash bin slash use error bin. We generate this output uh, saying there is a file that has been opened for writing by this user using this command that was the specific subject. Um, and the way this works uh, basically is uh, the rule engine says, hey, I want to get all the events that they are type open, and then we get the output. So we do first that filtering part there. Next, what we do is, okay, so from those, I want to see which ones the file script or directory, it's a slash bin. So we do that part. And then if without matches, I want to build the output. So using these uh, placeholders, uh, we retrieve all their different information from the, from the event loop, like give me the username and I'll get which was the user who was uh, modifying that binary file. So it was root. Who, or which was the process? So I can see, okay, so it was an HTTP, probably Apache server or something. And then tell me which was the subject, the file that we tried to modify. So it was the less, uh, being a less. So probably uh, someone was trying to install a rootkit or something under that binary file. So that's pretty cool, but this is just the basics. The idea here is that with this engine for doing filtering, we thought, all right, so when containers started back in time, uh, 
just looking at the processes or the containers information, it was enough. Nowadays, with orchestration tools like Kubernetes, we need to have access to a much uh, more complex uh, information coming from the orchestration layer from Kubernetes. So what if we could ingest uh, audit events? And Kubernetes audit, it's a new feature that was released on Kubernetes 1.11 and basically provides a chronological set of records documenting any changes done to the cluster. So, so if you, any change that is made to the cluster is done through the API server. So basically, that's a mechanism in the API server. So any verb, any action done against any resource, it's documented, it's logged somewhere else. Each action, it's a record, and it's a JSON object. And we can use this for auditing purposes to understand what the users or services are doing against the cluster status and configuration. With those events or those records, we can even dump into a file or send them into a web hook. And that's where the magic for uh, Sys, uh, for Falco happens. So here we can see an example of what's an audit event. So it's a JSON where we can see, all right, so I'm having, I'm doing a delete on this resource by this user, and it was successful because it's 200, so namespace foo, and it was allowed, okay? So basically, someone did a kubectl uh, namespace delete uh, foo. All right, so if we had this before, this internal architecture, basically what we have done, it's to include an embedded web server inside Falco, so, and we, uh, so we can receive uh, those events that are coming from the API server component. So there is basically an endpoint, which is called Kubernetes Audit, and there, through a post, we receive all the information. Uh, in order to implement this internally on Falco, we created a generic event interface. The first implementation has been Kubernetes events, but we could do different implementations for other things, like maybe for other orchestration platforms, maybe for um, an application that has a set of airbag mechanisms, whatever it is. Um, so then we have that event object. Uh, and as I said before, data is stored in JSON. So basically we used uh, something called JSON pointers to extract the values inside of the JSON. And now in addition to create rules using source syscall, which is all the information that we, we were getting from the kernel, we have another source of events called audit. So if we look at a JSON like this on, on the left, uh, using pointers, we can access to the different elements into, inside that JSON structure using errors or references like that on the right. So basically, if I have an accident, uh, um, an audit um, event like this, I can access using slash verb delete, the response code, status code, 200, etc. It's quite simple. So basically, uh, we have created inside Falco filtering on a data structure that allows to access any field on the JSON uh, event um, in an easy way. We have access to the timestamp, to the verb, to the resource, to the username, um, and then we have implemented a few specific macros to uh, make writing rules based on these events easier. If you run Falco list Kubernetes audit, you can see all the different uh, field classes events. This is how we call it internally. Um, and I think I did show this example um, yesterday, but this is an example on how you can detect uh, if someone is creating a Kubernetes configuration uh, map, a config map that contains what could be some private credentials, that in theory that should be stored in a secret. So we can audit um, wrong uh, behavior or 
uh, things that shouldn't be happening and then we'll create a DevOps ticket or whatever it is, our workflow. So basically we create a macro that it's called uh, contains private credentials. And if you see here, basically we are accessing to the request body uh, and we are basically uh, looking for specific strings. So if someone has done uh, or inserted the value name for an access key or for an S3 bucket access key or just password, we could add here token, whatever it is, uh, just look for uh, things that shouldn't be happening. Uh, we create that marker that will just detect that. Then. Um, to filter config maps, we create a simple macro like this, so we don't need to write the entire string, so we call it config map. And then for, uh, basically we want to uh, catch any verb, any action that makes a change on that resource. So we call it modify, modify, sorry, and that can be either a new, create, an update, or a patch, if we are doing an apply. So with those macros in place, we can build the final rule. Um, so we give it a name, a description, and condition, which is where the magic happens. So basically we are looking for a config mob event, which has been a modified, and that contains uh, these strings I was looking before. Okay, so very simple, and that's the idea. It's stupid simple, but be, uh, being able to create uh, interesting rules and mechanism with this. So when these matches, I'm going to generate this output. So a Kubernetes config map was created with private credentials. And what is nice here is that can I use those placeholders, those values again, to give more contextual information into my login system. So I can include which was the user, which was the verb, which was the namespace, uh, the config mob, and the actual configuration I was pushing. You can give it a priority, my source, because it's not system calls, it's Kubernetes, and I can define some tagging here in case I want to do some filtering um, or hierarchy organization of my roles. All right, so that's the theory, and now starts the dangerous part, and I'm going to show you how this works live. Okay, if you want to run these or you want to test these yourself, and let me see. If you head into our repository, GitHub repository, Falco Security Falco, there is a dev branch uh, and there is a folder examples called Kubernetes Audit Config. Here it's uh, I have some um, explanations on how to run this. So we are going to run this demo on Minikube. So I'll be, I'm going to be swapping uh, through different um, screens and terminals now. Ten. All right. Okay. So what I have done here on the left already, because it takes some time, it's to start Minikube. Um, I need to take into account a couple of things. So I need to be running Kubernetes 1.11. I need to mount this local volume because I need to do some special patching. And what I need to do here is to enable this feature, which is called Advanced Auditing Equal Tree. Okay, so I have that running. That's perfect. Um, and now, um, there are a couple of things that we need to do, which is documented here. First of all, we need to um, modify um, the way uh, API server is configured. We have created a script for that. It's called API server config patch, where basically we give it um, the log where we are dumping things, uh, what's going to be my audit policy, and my configuration web hook. Okay, so now let me run that. Patch. Okay, so I'm running that. So let me create a new cluster. So, yes, 
All right, so I have patched my Kubernetes uh, configuration. Actually, I want to show you a little bit uh, what I have done. I don't know if you're familiar with, this is big enough. If you're familiar with the audit system, basically here we can create an, uh, a different uh, number of rules. And let me explain you, for example, this one. Okay, so there are two ways of logging. We can uh, log either requests, which is only the get post the verb against the URL, or we can also uh, log the response. Typically, we will uh, log also the response, like in here, to understand if uh, uh, an action was executed successful. Basically, uh, we can decide uh, which resources we are logging about. So here I'm logging any changes or any action on any uh, config map and the uh, scope or in which namespace. So here I'm logging uh, just things from the cube system. So he, uh, this is basically, this is a rule to eliminate noise coming from the cube system uh, namespace, but this is basically the policy uh, to log everything which is happening either in a secret or in a config map, okay? This is on the Kubernetes configuration. Uh, you can get more on the Kubernetes documentation. You can get more details there. The other thing I wanted to show you is this other YAML that we are giving it to Minikube. Here, basically, I'm saying, hey, there is uh, an endpoint, Falco web server, listening in that endpoint. Uh, send everything there. So this at the moment, it's very uh, staging development configuration, which is not encrypted, not authenticated. Uh, and actually what I'm going to show you today, it's, it's uh, working through an SSH tunnel. But as we speak, we are working on integrating this uh, with our Helm chart in a proper secure manner with um, using a Kubernetes service and using uh, authentication and all the security required on this connection. Um, so what I'm going to do now is to open the, river, the tunnel. So I have the tunnel there and hopefully, let me see. Okay, patch tunnel, perfect. So I have connected my local host into my MiniQ cluster, and then what I'm going to do is to run Falco. Uh, I'm running Falco on my uh, laptop, uh, just because this is the way we use for development. Uh, as I said before, if you're deploying this into production, you should use uh, the Helm chart that we are preparing for that, or using a diamond set. So, um, let me actually run this. So I run Falco, and this is going to run Falco on a container. The default configuration, um, which is in this other tab, I have it here open, already includes um, a number of policies or rules uh, to detect different things happening on the cluster, okay? So, um, this is on loading. Hopefully that works. Well, actually, I don't need a proof because my events here are coming from Kubernetes. All right, so now what I'm going to do is open another terminal. Maybe this is too big. Uh, Falco. No. Where I have this. Okay, so here I have, okay, so Falco started. We can see how the internal web server, it's listening there, and how it has loaded some Kubernetes audit uh, default rules. We'll get into the details of that in a second. First, I want to show you some magic. Uh, hopefully that's big enough. And now I need to open some notes in here. Um, I won't make this big because it's just for me. Um, so basically, 
uh, we are going to create a deployment. And what you need to look, it's here, OK? In this uh, Falco um, output. Oh, shit. Um, Sure, I have things deployed. All right, so I'm reusing my cluster. Um, okay, so I first of all, I was I wanted to show you how I was logging a message, uh, creating the deployment, and then delete it. But we go the straight away some output here. So informa informational. Uh, output, deployment deleted, user, I mean the keep user, deployment, name is space, response, decision allow, reason. Okay, no reason because it was allowed. So if we come here, deployment, and we search, this is the default um, this is the default Falco rules. So here we can see how basically we create that output. There is a rule that says Kubernetes deployment deleted, and condition is there is some activity, and the activity is delete, and this is happening on a deployment, and the response is successful, create that, okay? All these activity delete and deployments, they are macros, so deployment, actually we could search for it. So deployment is just a macro that filters for resources that they are deployment, um, K activity, it's basically a macro that filters um, any event coming from a source, Kubernetes audit, and that has finished successfully. And then the other one is was kdelete, right? So let me find that. It's another macro that just says, all right, so any delete, all right? Very simple way of uh, creating rules. Um, let's see some other examples. Um, let's create or let's try to trigger um, that um, that rule I showed you before on the slides. So here I have a config map, and I can see how in the data section there is an access key. Uh, very bad security practice. So I'm going to create, ah, already exists, shit. Anyway, um, but, oh, because if uh, I'm, it's failing, but actually you could also do an apply. Oh. Uh, Okay, I cannot do an apply, but um, I can see how um, even if the if the action wasn't successfully executed, um, I am I'm still logging it. Okay, so warning config map with private credentials um, from that user in that specific config map, etc. Um, interesting. Now let's see. Create, let's, let's create the deployment again. I'll get my output here, which was my original example. So I'm creating an Nginx deployment, nothing special. But now, um, what I'm going to do is to detect if someone tries to run a shell on a container. That's something that you probably shouldn't be doing in production servers. And Falco already can detect that using system calls. I, I think I showed you uh, this yesterday, how we can detect if there is an exec VE or a clone um, for a binary, which is a shell. And we can detect that through system calls. But actually, we can also now detect it through um, cube audit. So I run my shell. Oh, there is nothing with PS. But so I can see here, all right, notice attach or exec to pod by this user, this pod, and this namespace action, and that's actually the command I executed. Let me go back into the default 
role set, and we have this. Attach exec pod, so detect any attempt to attach or exec into a pod, and condition is, all right, so there is an event that was started. I don't even need to, to, to that um, action to be successful. That's the magic of, of, of Falco. I think I was mentioning this yesterday. Uh, it's very interesting to see if people are trying something, not if they are succeeding in doing something. Uh, I've seen people who have network, uh, Kubernetes network policies to block traffic between containers, and they still find Falco very interesting to detect if a hacker is trying to connect a service that they shouldn't be connecting, or if their application is configured in a wrong way and it's trying to connect the service that they shouldn't be connecting. So even if a firewall is blocking a connection, it's still uh, understanding those attempts that are happening, it's interesting. Even if I have um, post security policies or airbag to prevent my users to do attach or exec into pods, just looking at someone is trying to do it, it's actually very interesting. Okay, so again, even was started, um, uh, this is happening on any pod sub resource. So, because inside that pod, I could have multiple containers. This is happening there. And um, it's a create, and the verb is either exec or attach. Uh, I'll create this, um, this event. So, I don't know how much time I do have left. More, exa more examples, um, and actually I should delete things first. Uh, account delete. I've never deleted the service account. It's probably. All right. So I can do, well, I can see already how cleaning my cluster, my apologies for that, um, already triggers um, some events. But basically what I wanted to show you is if someone tries to create a service account that shouldn't be created, I'm going to uh, trigger another event. So let's have a look. Service account. Oh, shit, I don't know where it is. Okay, so for example, if someone tries to create the service account inside the cube, um, um, into the cube system or cube public name spaces, that's something that only a very few people should be doing. Uh, again, we do event, service account, let's create, and in these namespaces, and we'll trigger under. Um, let me see if I have some other nice examples. Okay, so let me run directly into the last one. So, QCTL delete namespace. namespace. Let me delete that. And so I'm trying to create a, na a namespace. And another output. So, warning. Uh, someone has created a namespace that they shouldn't be doing. This lower namespace. So if someone not, tries to create a new namespace, they are trying to deploy a new application, I haven't authorized that, uh, I'm going to trigger an alert. Um, I think these, you get the idea of all the examples, uh, they are quite similar. Um, you can get all this inside the Falco, um, Falco security GitHub organization. We have created a bunch of default uh, Kubernetes um, default policies. Uh, 
I'm expecting to basically follow uh, the different Kubernetes versions and try to come up with what should be default uh, rule sets for each Kubernetes version. So if someone is uh, willing to help, that would be awesome. Or you can create your own rules uh, specific to your organization based on your policies. And that's everything I have for today. Uh, I hope you found it useful. Uh, this is still uh, beta, so even the deployment I had here today, it was insecure, like plain text and everything. But within the following days, uh, we expect to have it something more production ready. And yeah, five minutes if you have any questions. Uh, uh, is Waco is part of Sysdig solution, or is so, separate? So Falco started as um, our founder going on vacations, and some of the people taking it from there, um, and it started as a pet internal project inside Sysdig. Uh, it was open source. We got a bunch of people and different organizations using it because it was open source, but it wasn't until a year and a half ago. No, actually more. No, no, it's two years uh, or two years and a half when we decided to open it more into the community and everything. And last month, um, Falco was. Uh, adopted or hosted by the CNCF Foundation. So the process of doing that has been basically making Falco complete independent from Sysdig. So it's true that there is a bunch of people paid by Sysdig who are uh, developing Falco, but there are numbers of the community that they are also contributing with patches. Uh, someone last month created a file cooperator, for example, so this can be uh, deployed in Kubernetes in a different way. So there is every day more and more new people joining the project that they are not part of Sysdig. And everything now it's like handled independently from Sysdig. Okay, you just mentioned FACO is to do some anomaly detection. Mm -hmm. So compared to Sysdig, what is the existing capability of anomaly detection in Sysdig? So basically, you know uh, they use the same technology, Sysdig and Falco, and they, they, um, they share how you instrument the kernel. So the same technology that captures system calls, put them into the user space, and there is a state machine there, a set of libraries that analyze those system calls, and you can filter them. That part of code, it's shared between Sysdig and Falco. Sysdig is used for filtering. So Sysdig, the, I'm talking about the open source tool. No, I'm not talking about the commercial product, which is a monitoring thing. Uh, Sysdig allows to filter like TCP dump any system call. So it's going to be used for troubleshooting on a single node. I want to see which process is creating um, a file or modifying a file. And I'm using a uh, Sysdig like Wireshark or TCP dump to filter system calls. Falco works the other way around. You create those filters upfront, which is basically this language. And then if the process, if the container doesn't match or matches, those rules will trigger an alert. Okay, so it's basically the same technology, but just in opposite directions, if it makes sense. This is a follow-up from uh, your session yesterday. Yes. Uh, so I think this is a great demo of how Falco analyzes what's happening in the runtime. Um, but you were talking yesterday a little bit about looking at what's inside of your containers. So uh, my, my question is, where does this fit in your security tool chain? Do you still recommend doing image scanning? Yes. Where? Yes. So, um, and actually we wrote um, about this. Um, Sysdig as a vendor in here, we have 
both the monitoring products as they monitor and Sysdex Secure, which is a complete tool set for security that includes runtime security, auditing, compliance, image scanning. But as part of our open source efforts, uh, we propose how you could build a default security, container security stack using open source tools. Uh, what we proposed was to use Falco uh, as the runtime security engine, Anchor as an image scanning, and we think that both uh, sides of, of the moon, they are complementary. So you need to have image scanning on your pipeline that will uh, basically uh, detect known vulnerabilities. You need to have runtime security to understand what happens once that a, new, a container has been deployed that you thought it was secure, but maybe it's not. From those foundations, we can come up with very interesting use cases that validate uh, this proposal. So I have seen here at KubeCon um, people talking about how to implement uh, security on the CICD pipeline. And they are very passionate about doing image scanning, and that's great. And you have an admission controller that can detect if an image uh, that you are deploying in Kubernetes is secure. So today it's secure, that's cool. But maybe tomorrow that image is not secure anymore because you have found a vulnerability in that image. But it's still running on Kubernetes because the pod was already scheduled. That admission controller is not going to do anything. So for example, we created an integration between Falco and Anchor that basically Falco, every, uh, every basically you configure this with a cron, will go into Anchor and will say, hey, tell me which images they are vulnerable. And I'll create a Falco rule set that says, if there is an image running that matches this hash, uh, and has any vulnerability, trigger an alert. So an operator or the developers can go and say, hey, you have some containers already running, they're still running, that they have vulnerabilities. You might have fixed this on your latest version, your pipeline might have rebuilt that container, but there is no image there running. So this is just an example. Uh, we are coming with more use cases um, uh, filling the gap between uh, pre-deployment security and post-deployment security, which is runtime. Cool, thank you. All right, I think that's it. Uh, I hope you enjoy. Thanks for coming.